about anything that's live, right? Here in the service. Man, pastor can have some glitches. <laughs> There's nothing like singing a song and going, wow, I have two pages of this page one and not the second page. And so uh, thank you for bearing with me. Um, and so uh, uh, just a, a great, you know what I love about that song is it is about who we are and what we do. And when you have the Savior, you're the one that can stand up. Um, it is Father's Day, and on Father's Day, a lot of, uh, um, I'm not going to do a Father's Day sermon. I do recognize the fathers, and happy Father's Day to you in this sense. But I know that God calls all people. Um, he, you know, the song was, Rise Up Men. You know, in your weakness, you're strong. And, and when you think of the scriptures, um, in your weakness, God is the one who brings the strength through you. And it did not just stop, stop there with men. It also had women. Women are the ones professing the truth. Take it and give it out to people. Show them God's love in word. And then it was um, the reminder that we've been through some things. But even though we've been through some things, all that has made us stronger. All that has uh, brought us co closer to God. Refined by God. So that we can stand up, strong, men, women, kids. And then the, the last one was the church. The church, rise up church. You're the one. Um, we live in a, in a time frame where so many things are uh, said and done. And in that, um, we have uh, sometimes where we as the church are kind of uh, quiet. And this is not a... It is, I, the timing is not just the timing. We as a people of God should never be quiet. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not where you go out and scream and shout in someone's face to shut them down and put them down. It is time to stand up strong and be the men and women God has called us to be in a time frame which is every day. You just have to look around at those moments that come your way. In uh, both Mother's Day, Father's Day, there's also Grandparents' Day. And, and may I say this? In every day. Because you as a people, we are given things that we're supposed to do. In the scriptures, um, we have areas of text that tell us how to bring our children up. And when we bring our children up a certain way, uh, uh, God will edify certain things that will take place in that because of what you are doing. May I say this? Um, in the time frame where uh, I personally grew up in church, um, it was a thought process that not only did my parents bring me up, but my Sunday school teacher brought me up. My youth pastor brought me up. Understand what I'm saying. People of God surrounded those coming up, and you, you are a part of that upbringing of people. So whether you have kids or not, whether you're a parent or not, God has called you to be that individual that brings up rightness, holiness. And, and, and by that, can I, I say it this way, because we all have um, friends, we all have family, we all have, and I, I'll get, I, I narrow it out, we all have co-workers, and some, uh, we all have grocery people, we all have mail carriers. I'm telling you this, and, and you can, I'm trying to open up your eyes that no matter who you are, you come in contact with humanity. And as you come in contact with humanity, you are the one that has helped raising up godly people as God works through you. So, be strong. Be faithful. In your, in your Bibles, this morning I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and I'm only doing two verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. It says this, be on guard, or in some of your versions, be on watch. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. I love these two verses in this sense, because so many people pick and choose certain things. I don't know if you've ever had where scripture has been thrown in your face because you are a Christian, and so if you stumble or if you make a mistake, 
That's when scriptures are thrown in your face. And usually when that's done, it's people that take little sections and they go, this is what I'm going to condemn you with. And so sometimes we even do the, the opposite. We're like, oh, I'm only going to take uh, on uh, stand firm in the faith. That's me. Be courageous, well, sometimes. But be strong, sometimes. Do everything with love. Well, let's kind of push that one to the side. Because how, how can I tell you like it is if I have to have love? So I'm standing here today saying this, that when we are a people, um, be either men, women, or kids, we are the ones that have to stand with all of it. So, so be on guard. You know what, in, um, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 15, it says, if the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. When the blind, and, and we've heard that, I, I, have you ever read scripture, go, well, I've heard that phrase before, you know, the blind leading the blind. Well, well, here we have it, where the blind leads the blind, and what happens, you're both going to fall into a pit. And I don't know if you've ever played those games where you've both been blindfolded, and, and here's what happens. If one is blindfolded, and they're even leading another blindfolded person. The rest of us, you know, what do we usually do? We stand by and laugh because you're going to see funny things happen when the blind leads the blind. I mean, we laugh, but then we laugh until someone gets hurt. Correct? Uh, okay. Or some of us go, they got hurt, we still laugh. <laughs> but we shouldn't. And, and we should have this understanding that if we, if we laugh at what the blind is doing, then we're failing. Because what we have is the opportunity to see those who don't see. And we need to be the ones that are being well aware of what is surrounding all the circumstances. See, you can take this, um, please take this scripture to heart in, in this sense, that when you're attentive, when you are watchful, when you're on guard, it is with purpose. And it is not just with purpose by yourself, is with purpose with the surroundings that you're in. Because I say it this way. If I'm on guard or watchful for the things that are surrounding me that just seem evil, and so now I'm in prayer. God, I, this, is, this, is a, this right over here, so help me with this. I don't want this on me. I'm on guard with it, God. And, and I, I, have, I have everything on, the, the full armor of God. And so with that, I know you're going to help me. And, and so um, protect me from that over there and protect me from that over there and protect me from that over there. And God, walk with me. I, I see everything that's happening around me. And so I'm going to be on guard so nothing will come up against me, God. And so sometimes our prayer just ends that way. And God has never been a, a singular person God. I mean, he is, but he isn't. See, this is the beauty of God. See, God loves each and every one of you and wants each and every one of you to be on guard, but he wants you to be on guard besides for yourself. I want you to take your arm around your best friend. I want you to take your arm around your, 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 your spouse or, or your kids or your co-worker. Or I want you to reach out to the one who is, who's, um, how many go to the, grocery store, the same grocery store all the time? I, I, I have three, but I go frequently to where they know who you are which makes them maybe not my best friend, but it makes them more than taking my money. In fact, I've held up lines with conversation with the cashiers. You understand what I'm saying? Which is a good thing. So you take your arm around those that are surrounding you. You be on guard and watchful, watchful for them. You want your kids to come up safe and right. You want your parents to be safe and right. You want your friends to be, you understand what I'm saying? So it's more than just yourself that you're on guard for. It is for all that are surrounding you. God's trying to open up your heart and eyes to what has taken place. But you too, be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Sometimes I wonder. You hear... Oh, I'm losing my faith. I've lost my faith. I don't understand my faith. Um, um, what is faith? Or, or what is it that I'm truly believing in? What am I supposed to stand firm on? 
And, and one of the, the things is I had talked about reading Old Testament and New Testament is because the, the one of the beauties of that is the reality that God has placed things where um, people have wrote them down, inspired by God, to help your life be lived out with Him. And, and I, I, have you ever had something come up against you and you prayed and, and you know God answered your prayer? Does that not build your faith up? Does, see, because for some of us it's like this. I will only believe if I see. I mean, and guess what? You're not saying nothing new. That was in scriptures too. But sometimes we base our faith on only what we see. Well, I'm, I'm saying this. Base your faith on what is in God's word and then have it walked out in your life and then you're going to learn that you can stand strong. You're going to stand strong, ready, on not lying. You're going to stand strong on not, um, I could get, uh, you know what, there's so much in here that uh, uh, you can stand strong on your language. You can stand strong on your thought process. You know, what goes into the eyes. You can stand strong on, um, ready, on how you interact with individuals just because they're not like you. Whoa. And look into the stories of Peter. Peter had to have his faith organized by God. You can't say that's, that's bad. I love that story where, where, the, where the sheep came down. Oh, I can't eat that, God. Oh, I can't have nothing to do. I can't even touch that stuff, God. And God are you kidding? God, I'm paraphrasing. Are you kidding me? You can't touch what I have given you, what I, God, lay out before you. You need to open up your, have your faith expanded on what you're standing on. And when you stand on it with me, you're going to find out that it's not this tiny little faith. It is an explosive faith that everyone can see in all aspects of your life. But you have to stand firm on it. Don't back down. See, a lot of times people come up against you. Well, you know, it, it could be this way or it could be that way. And, and you know what? If you're, if you're wondering, see if it backs up with the line of Scripture. It's like, it's like it, you know, people joke about being an instruction manual. You know what? I don't know if you, I've put stuff together and have, have pieces left over. I know I've said, I've said this before. And then I've had to, uh, let me just take Legos. Has anybody ever put Legos together? And I don't mean your own creation. I mean like you go out and your kids talk you into buying a $60 little tiny Lego <laughs> that has a thousand pieces. And they pretend like if they put it on in these different bags that you can do it. And there's been times where I have on my own, I think I can put this right here. And then you find out you put it in wrong. And the hardest thing is to take a Lego apart that's brand new that you've squished on in a place it doesn't belong. What I'm saying is this, that God has given us things so we won't place them wrong. God has given us things in the scriptures so when someone comes up, and I'm going to be blow, blow, bold with an out-and-out lie of what God says, and you go, well, wait a minute, that doesn't even co connect with any of this. But you have to stand firm on it. Stand, don't back down. Don't waver. To be courageous and strong, standing firm on your faith, is a growing experience. How can you be courageous if you have never had anything come up against you? Am I making sense to anybody here? I want to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. How can you be create, cour courageous if nothing has come up against you that, that scares you, that frightens you, that places you in a moment of, of distress, that puts you in, a, in an unsure circumstance? If you have never had that, how can you be courageous? And so uh, I believe all those things come up against us as humanity. Things scare us. Things are so different that we're, we're going to do one of two things. It's different, so I'm, I'm never going to go near it, which, again, is not being courageous. And I say these things for this reason. Because your faith, God 
allows you, helps you, anoints you that courage. Your, cur your courage can only be so big as an individual. Ready? The cowardly lion, right? Wizard of Oz. Oh, I just need courage. When he actually had courage, he just needed a thought process of how it needs to come out with it. Actually, things had to come up against him, and in an instant, he had to make a choice of courage or not courage. Now, walk away from the Wizard of Oz and come into the realm of what God has. When things come up against you, you have a moment to go, are you courageous or not? How can I be courageous? And I'm going to tell you what, I saved all of this in these, this text here because that opens up your prayer life. It opens up your prayer life. God, help me to be courageous. Help me to no longer be as a child afraid of the dark or the closet or under the bed. Help me be strong and be the one who makes the bed. The one who leaves the closet door open. I'm, I'm using, uh, like, what is it called, metaphors or something? I want us to have an understanding that the things that frightened us when we were a child in Christ, we grow up. And as we grow up, we get stronger and more courageous in standing up for what God has for not only me, but for those that, sur excuse me, those that surround me. So be courageous. Grow up in God. You know, if, if this were to be um, a, a Father's Day sermon, it'd be man up. Be a man. You know what's most difficult about that? And we're outnumbered by women, I believe, in here. And that's what's difficult. You don't say that. So I say this. Man up. Woman up. Kid up. What, what, what do I mean? What do I mean? God has each individual where you grow up in Christ. So grow up in Christ. That is my challenge. You can't just read this scripture and, and, and not take that on. At the same time, be careful. Because Satan will come in and he will tempt you the best way he knows how. And believe me, he knows how to tempt you. Otherwise, it, you would be a, a, a useless thing to come up against if I can't tempt you. Here's the thing. When temptations come your way, guess what? That, that's a time for courage. That's a time for standing strong on your faith. That's a, a time to be strong. That's a time to take what you've learned growing up and put it right back in his face. Get thee behind me, Satan. And, and one of my favorite scriptures on temptation is this. That God has not given you anything that you can't not get away from, get out of, escape from. He is the escape of temptation. He is, the, and by escape I mean this. When temptation comes your way, God is the one who will make sure that as you call on him and depend on him, you will not sin. See, we live in a world where, oh no, you got to sin every day. That's fine with you. My God says you don't have to sin every day. My God says you can live a holy life. My God says that anything that comes your way, I will provide a way out. So are we depending on him? Or do we just put him in a pocket for when we need him on certain occasions? After all, that sin's really cool. That temptation that keeps coming up. Uh, you talk about strong. Pastor Mark, come on up because I'm in my closings. Talk about being strong. See, when stuff comes your way, oh man, it just keeps coming up. Therefore, I just, I, get, I gotta give in. And, and ready? It happens. So let me encourage you this way. When temptation comes and you do slip up and you do make that mistake and you did not take the way out that God has given you. In fact, you didn't even ask for the way out that God has given you and it put you in this dilemma and it broke your, 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 your uh, it broke you. God forgives. Instantly. Always. God forgives. Why? Because in the scripture here where it says do everything in love, I'm going to start with the one who loves the most and that is God. He did everything in love for every circumstance that surrounded his creation. 
by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you and me. He did the ultimate thing of love. And in that, besides, besides dying on the cross, see a lot of times we like, oh, I got forgiveness of sin, woohoo! He also sent his son who had to be strong, had to be courageous, had to show what standing on firm faith was and showed how to love. Temptation. He stood up. Think about it. He stood up for uh, ready men. When all these men were ready to stone a woman for adultery, the Savior stood up for her. Why? Because forgiveness came her way. Go and sin no more. I love it. Why is that? Because um, two things. A mistake was made and he showed us how to forgive. Go and sin no more just challenges me. It can only be done through the work of the Holy Spirit. So us as a people, when we leave this place, what's this say? And do everything in love. How you speak, in love. How you think, in love. How you interact with your neighbor, in love. How you interact with someone on the road, with love. How you, how you interact at the grocery store, in love. How you, how you interact with your family, in the household, with love. See, it, it, it is a challenge. And all that love, Pastor, there's no stinking way. Yes, there is. God has given you the Holy Spirit to do all of that in His love. Some may walk out, I'm not taking that challenge. I'm not backing down. <laughs> Take that challenge. You know, open up your eyes. Whoa, whoa Pastor is talking about this situation right here, and I got to do this in love? Okay. In this instant, God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to do this in love. We're going to stand and sing. I hope when you leave this, this place that you will be inspired to love. That you'll be inspired to look at your strength level. How strong am I? To look at your courage level. Where am I at? To see, God, my faith needs to grow. Where am I at? Be inspired that way as you leave this place. As we sing this song, we're going to sing a song. It's a uh, faith, faith of our, faith of our fathers. Every year, and and I'll tell you what, faith of our fathers. It, know this. It is a growing faith. That's why it's a, a a song for such a long time. It is a, by growing. I mean this. It is it is to us. I want you to walk out where people. Uh, you know what. When your when your when your stone is placed over you, or Jesus calls us home, or your stone is placed over you, they're like so and so. My brother, my sister had such a faith, such a faith, passed on down generation to generation. Let me close and uh, let me pray as we sing, and then after we sing, I'm going to walk to the back just to give an eyeball. See you later. Okay, God. With the words that are spoken, help us to be your children, doing as you ask through the work of your spirit. When we make our mistakes, God, we, we ask that um, you will help us to uh, be nudged into knowing what we have done and that we may confess and ask for forgiveness. And may we be such a great inspiration as we, in, in the, the, the people within our lives, so that someone comes to know you and grows in you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon fire and soul.
Standing close on um, this portion of service, of gathering together, we ask an anointing on your people. As the song we just sung is actually almost the words of the sermon. May we be true to thee, though, until death, and when we see you face to face. God, an anointing on your people as we leave these steps out the door. May we be that great light for you. Thank you for your children. And bless them in Jesus' holy name. Amen.